everyone and welcome along to another Kipco British Champion Series preview as we look ahead to four fantastic battles on the Knavesmire. It is of course the York Ebor Festival. The Judmont International is shaping up to be one of the races of the season and this year's star performer Golden Horn heads the market. We'll be hearing from his trainer John Gosden. Will a four-year-old spring a surprise and can the Grey Gatsby reverse the form? Find out what his trainer Kevin Ryan makes of the race. Aidan O'Brien currently heads the British Champion Series trainers table and he holds the aces in the Yorkshire Oaks. We'll be getting our teeth stuck into the Nunthorpe where Acapulco for trainer Wesley Ward gets a lot of weight from her elders and she could follow up Royal Ascot's success with victory on the Knavesmire. And the stayers are back for the Lonsdale Cup. And once again, Will Lockhorns in the latest instalment of Dixon versus Bell. And I'm delighted to say that joining me once again for the Kipco British Champion Series preview is Chris Dixon. Chris, good to see you. Our attentions, as we've touched on already, now turn to, towards York. And this is a festival that I really look forward to because the locals and racing fans really get behind what is a fabulous four days of racing. Yorkshire's a massive racing county and York is the um, feature track that they've got there, the top track in Yorkshire. And a brilliant meeting, this one. They, they have a great set of meetings during the course of the year, but I think the Ebor meeting is the highlight and everyone gets behind it. All the, the locals have a great time. It's busy after racing as well. It's lively during racing, an excellent meeting. The quality on the track is top notch. Mm, absolutely. We're going to get into some of the big races a little bit later on. But before that, let's find out a little bit more about what is involved in preparing a course like York for such a big meeting and how preparations in 2015 have gone from the man in charge, William Darby. William, here we are again in August at the Welcome to Yorkshire EBA Festival, your signature meeting and record prize money this year. Yeah, really excited about the fact we put an extra 300 grand into prize money for £3.8 million on offer next week, the 25 races. No race will be less than £50,000. And, yeah, really looking forward to the, to the meeting getting underway. And, and, you know, the showpiece, if you like, of the meeting is the Judmont International, you know, and a huge boost in the fact that it was voted the best race in the world in 2014. Yeah, really proud of that fact. They rate every race in the world or based on the best top four in that race, the first four home in that race. And over the last three years, we came out top of those rankings. So we're very honoured to be at the top of the tree. We know it'd be hard to defend like anything, but um, but it hopefully success will build success. And we've got some fascinating entries in the race this year for what will be the richest renewal of the race that we've ever staged and great support from Judmont. And I know they'll be keen to win it with time tests for next week. Absolutely. And, and uh, indeed, you know, the Grey Gatsby, second yeah. last year, yeah. and, and a Yorkshire winner would be so, so special oh, in this. Oh, yeah, it'd be the first, I think, the first one in a while that Yorkshire has done it. Of course, Grey Gatsby won the Betfred Dante yes. last year and taking on maybe this year's Dante winner in Golden Horn. So a real clash of the generations, and it would be great for Kevin y Ryan's yard if, if the Grey Gatsby can follow up what's in winning the Irish Champion Stakes, of course, last September and running so well here last year against Australia. Yeah, fantastic. And, and of course, last year, Mahara won the uh, gym, uh, gym crack here, and he's gone on to great, great things this time, which is what you want for that race, and you've got record prize money for the gym crack. Yeah, we're delighted by the performance of last year's winner, going on to win three Group 1 races on the bounce, an incredible record and and the gym crack is a race we're really trying to build over the over the years and we've put in record prize money 220 grand up for a group two and um it looks like it's attracted some really interesting entries and we hope that it it produces a great race again and a great winner and of course we can all look forward to the december speech it will be a bit interesting that part see. of the tradition i think is so so important yeah, to that, you know because there's no other race like it yeah i think 246 years the gym crack dinner and the gym crack race have been been linked inextricably in history and it would be great if that could could go forward uh, and really is a, another signature race of the meeting, a great six furlong two year old Colts race. And the Lowther as well is yeah. a race that surely the, the authorities have been looking at to make a group one one of these days and again record prize money for the Phillies race. Yeah, I think really crying out for a good Phillies group one over the summer summer group one in Europe and we don't have that at the moment and we're lobbying hard for the Lowther to be considered for that. Of course last year we had a fantastic yes. renewal with Tiggy Wiggy and and, and 
it looks, a, again, a fascinating field this year. And, yeah, we'll be lobbying hard to see if we can take that 200 grand Group 2 Phillies race up further and get it upgraded to Group 1, all being well with a, with a great race this year, hopefully. I think everybody is in anticipation of the gates opening here at York for four days of tremendous racing. Thanks, William. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. So now we're going to turn our attentions to one of the big races of the week, the Judmont International. And it's a welcome back to Yorkshire for this season's Dante winner. He went on to win the Derby and the Coral Eclipse. It is, of course, Golden Horn. We'll hear now from his trainer, John Gosden. He's a stronger horse all the time. You know, Frankie jumped on him the other day to work him and thought he felt his neck was, you know, it's a lot more power to the horse. Uh, he's a, you know, he's still growing and developing. He's a three-year-old. Uh, not fully developed really until four and even on sometimes to five. So to that extent, uh, he's progressing. But that's why the weight allowance becomes increasingly diminished all the time in the scale between that and the and the older horses. But he's, he's, he's you know, mentally and physically, he's, he's gone the right way. He's had a busy year, make no mistake. He was right here cantering in the cold and the sleet of mid-January. So... It's not like he's been having any nice holidays in the Mediterranean. He hasn't been doing that. Disappointing we couldn't run in the King George, but an inch and a half of rain coming steadily and solidly the day before with of no help, particularly through the bottom of the old track, Swinley Bottom. Uh, so, you know, he comes here, in a sense, fresher than he might have been. So there is uh, no harm in that. It looks a fascinating race at the moment to see how it comes up with the confirmations today. But... Um, I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's a kind of definitive distance, if you like, where these horses can meet. And to that extent, uh, let's hope we get nice enough ground. We're happy on good to soft, don't bother us at all. Even, even soft, if that's required, but uh, just not what we had at Ascot. How important is it to the owner and to you that the horse maintains his unbeaten record? <laughs> I mean, you know, nobody, you know, nobody likes to get beaten. I mean, the whole point, you're trying to win races all the time. Uh, I think, uh, you know, if you're taking on the best that's, that's around, how the race is run is going to be a pretty critical factor. Um, there seems to be no obvious pace from what I see. And so whether there are pacemakers or not, a lot of decisions have to be made on that matter. And then quite what the pacemakers do is another matter altogether. So, you know, look, let's hope it's a nice clean race and we get a good solid result for whoever the winner is. In the Eclipse, you proved your versatility. Frankie was able to send the horse on about his business. Um, so I guess from a tactics point of view, you have any number of options up your sleeve if needs be. Yeah, I think like most horses of his class, they're probably better sitting off a good pace and showing their acceleration, uh, turn a foot. And uh, certainly that's probably the way like most of them like, us like to see those horses run. But uh, again, as you say, there was a small field, there was no obvious pace, so we went and set our own. And you can do that at York if required. To, uh, it's not ideal. Uh, I'm quite clear in my mind about that. But if it has to be done, it has to be done. It promises to be, Chris, a really, really good race. You've got potentially Glen Eagles, time tests. Obviously, we've just heard from a confident John Gosden about mm. Golden Horn. This race could be one of the races, if not the race of the season. It regularly has been as well. It's a race that ranks extremely highly, uh, about the highest in the world um, in terms of the quality of the race. So it is a, a really high quality event. And this year it's definitely delivering on that front with the Derby and the Eclipse winner locking horns with the Guineas winner, hopefully. And the horse that was second in the Eclipse, of course, at Sandown and won this race mm. last year, um, taking on Golden Horn once again. And he, he did have uh, Golden Horn supporters a little bit worried for a while in the Eclipse. I think the stiff track really played to his strengths that day. A flatter track at York, but I think Golden Horn once again the horse to beat. Let's just get quick answers from you if I can. Glen Eagles, will he stay if he, if he runs? Um, Stepping up to a mile and a quarter. It's a slight doubt, but I think he will. Looking at his pedigree, he, he should get the trip, yeah. Time test, does he look like a Group 1 horse to you? He does. He was very impressive at Royal Ascot. The time was impressive. He needs to progress again. He's into top level company for the first time but I think that he is up to the very top level but he's taken on a potentially mm. well a, a great one in, in um, Golden Horn. Yeah absolutely now those are questions that connections of time test and Glen Eagles have going into the, the matchup if you like against Golden Horn and they've never seen Golden Horn. One horse who has and Chris touched on it is the Grey Gatsby and he was second to Golden Horn in the Coral Eclipse. He and his trainer Kevin Ryan will be hoping that at York the form will be reversed. 
He's had a tremendous season, Kevin. Still get yet to get his head in front, but ran an absolute blinder in uh, Royal Ascot. And again, against Golden Horn, you know, impossible task almost, giving all that weight away to a Derby winner in the, in the Coral Eclipse. Yeah, you know he was he was unlucky at Ascot, but that's you know that's you have to take it on the chin. Um, Did you feel if the card had fallen slightly differently, that he, instead of just getting beaten inches, he might have won by inches? That's right. You know it. Um, you know he just got locked up, and um, you know he that's race riding, and uh, he just didn't. If he got out two strides sooner, I think there would have been a different result. Um, but delighted with him at, uh, at Sandown, you know, it was, it was a big, big ask to give that sort of weight away to, to an, what looks like being an exceptional uh, three-year-old. And um, but looking forward to, 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 to running against him again at, at York. And he's had some big days at York, of course, he won the Dante there. And that long old straight at York, because he's a horse who loves to sort of wind up and wind up, does that tend to suit him? Uh, very much so. You know, he, he, he's a horse that, uh, you know, the big long straight is, 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 is and as long as he gets a, a, a true run race, I, yes. think, I think that's very important to him, you know. One of the Grey Gatsby's partners throughout his career is the, the extremely talented Ryan Moore, but sadly, recently, Ryan's been sidelined with injury. It's meant that the, the Jockeys' Championship has taken a slightly different look uh, to how many of us predicted it at the start of the season. And the man on top is Sylvester D'Souza, and he's really attracted headlines this season. He's riding at the top of his game. And with that in mind, we can find out now a little bit more about the Brazilian based in England. I love the win I had the Queen Vaz at Ascot for Mark Johnson. Um, so the the champ is steak. Say he's retired McCoy. Say Martin Dwyer, he's, he got them silly jokes like, you know, sometimes you have to laugh while you laugh at him. Could be Seb Sonnet or Grand Gibbers. Bad loser. <laughs> When I'm home, I do a bit of garden, so that's all basically. I would love to be a footballer. Uh, Ronaldinho is quick, smart, and he can play. He's just doing well in life, you know. That's my ambition. The fillies and mares category has thrown up some epic races and we're going to take this opportunity to remind ourselves of some of those now. Blue Cedar in the blue jacket, a shot to a two length lead. Tiggy Wiggy in second, here comes Ryan now on Legotissimo. Legotissimo, the blue and orange is coming home, the strongest and she grabs the lead from Blue Cedar and gives Ryan a double in the Guinness. And they're off and racing. A barging match on the inside is together forever. Cleans up diamonds and rubies. Whilst that's happening, Legatissimo has struck for home in the Oaks. In second place, qualify for a huge shock on the inside. Legatissimo qualify unbelievably. He's coming. Legatissimo narrowly, heads up, heads down. And possibly a mighty shock. nearest to us coming home strongly. Found and Ryan have grabbed the lead inside the last furlong. Here's a venture in the green jacket, unleashed by Sumion. A venture coming home strongly to get to found. Lucida closing on those. A venture just. Amazing Maria coming under a ride, followed by Fintry. He's waiting for room on Lucida. Avenir Seatan towards the outside, but Wiener is now at the back of the field as they sprint up the hill. Amazing Maria and on the near side, Fintry. Between them, Euro Charlene. Avenir Seatan still has a chance. Amazing Maria just has the lead and racing to the line. Amazing Maria wins the Falm of Stakes. Lego 
Artisimenez, quick and smartly, moves through to take over as they head down towards the last furlong. Wedding Bow is running on from the rear. Leg Artisimo with 200 yards to cover. Wedding Bow is out after her. Then Arabian Queen and Star of Seville. Leg Artisimo stretching out in front, has too much fast for them. And Leg Artisimo wins the Nassau. As we touched on at the top of, of this preview, Chris, when we look at the Phillies and Mayors category and the Yorkshire Oaks, it seems that one man holds the key, and that man is the master of Bally Doyle, Aidan O'Brien. He's got a, a strong hand this year. Yeah, he won it last year with Tapestry. He's got a good record in the race in recent years as well, Ollie, and he does have several possible contenders this time around. You mentioned Tapestry last year. It was a fantastic race because you had Tegruda and Tapestry locking horns, and in the end, Tapestry got the better of that battle. Aidan O'Brien will be hoping for the same outcome, and that is another the win in the Yorkshire Oaks and we as racing fans will be hoping for the same outcome and that is an epic race. We don't have to wait long to find out who comes out on top. Right, time now for the latest instalment of Dixon versus Bell. Now you'll know that it is 2-1 to Chris. Uh, I'm well aware that it's 2-1 to Chris and this time is my chance to, to draw level. Uh, we're heading to the pool table. We're going to have a game of pool. You won the football and the platting challenge, which, which you'll remember, as will the horse, and I won the golf. So You're not running against him. <laughs> yeah, no, a bit <laughs> off sideline with a sore neck. Uh, we are going to hopefully make it two. We'll find out now who comes out on top in this week's Dixon versus Bell. So here we are then, time for the latest instalment of Dixon versus Bell, and this time around, as you can see, and as we've touched on, it's going to be a pool challenge. 2-1 at the moment to, to Chris. How confident are you about this? Not that confident. Really? Hard to know. I don't know how good you are. And I don't know how good you are. So should we find out? Yep. Good luck. Good luck. I'll break because I'm behind the eight ball. Right, OK. Dixon's yellow. A bit behind here. Big shot coming up. He sunk it. He hasn't. It's a good shot. It's three all. Yeah. Oh no. This is a big shot. Tap it in. <laughs> that could go in there, by the way, and that would mean that I win. Just, I'm just saying, I don't want to get in your head or anything, but just don't get that. I don't in put there. the black in there. No, I won't do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good shot. That's a really good shot. Oh, oh. my days. <laughs> oh, too hard. You've got those two there by just being poor. That's not true. It definitely is. <laughs> that was a terrible shot. <laughs> and so was that. Oh. Oh. oh no. So I'm going to try and win it with a double. From there, What's into that? there. It's all about the angles. And if that misses, then I've got that as my backup plan. You're not allowed a backup plan, it's got to go in that one. Can you let me concentrate on my, winning, my no. potential winning shot? This could, if this goes in, this would be the greatest thing I've ever done on television. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be hard. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. To come down to the black, this is what whoever invented Paul wanted. This moment. Oh my days, how have you <laughs> done that? Oh. oh no, that was an awful shot. They weren't very good. Are you feeling the pressure? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Leave it out. Get out of town. You did it to me. <laughs> oh, what's happened? Right. No! Oh my word! Get it! Oh get it! Get word. it! Oh no! 
<laughs> you just hit and hook. <laughs> right. You can't have that. Two all. Roll on Doncaster. One of the big sprint races throughout the course of the season is the Nunthorpe, and we've seen some great races. What, ra what makes this race, I should say, so interesting is that the two-year-olds can run in it, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds, you name it. It's sort of open to all ages. It means that the two-year-olds get lots of weight. And this year, uh, we have got a star two-year-old, we think, in the form of, of Acapulco, who won at, at Royal Ascot. You've got the sort of regulars in there, Soul Power, who's won the race before, Muthamir, who's had a great season. I, again, like the Judmont International, in terms of quality in that division, mm. we're set fair for a great race, aren't we? We definitely are. And you mentioned that. Um, weight for age allowance that the, that the juveniles get that is, is very, very hefty. And Acapulco is no normal looking juvenile. Mm. She's massive. She gets the Phillies allowance on top of the two year old allowance as well. She, so she is going to be getting lumps of weight from her rivals. She's very light and experienced, but she looks very, very talented. And she was mighty impressive at Royal Ascot when she blitzed the field in the Queen Mary and a good looking Queen Mary field as well. So she's going to take a bit of beating, you would think. Uh, exactly. And, and I agree with you. The, the one thing I like about her, you mentioned the lack of experience, but effectively, it doesn't really matter. The stool's open, hand breaks off, and she just goes. Yeah. She'll be hard to peg back. She will, particularly at a track like York, where speed can hold up, particularly on that mm. straight track. And um, her real blistering early pace could be a, a really potent weapon. You mentioned their soul power, who's won the race twice in the past, 2010, and then last year. He will want that really strong pace because he tends to be held up traveling and then bursts through mm. late, doesn't he? And this time round, uh, slightly different for Soul Power, and that is that Frankie Dettori is going to be riding him and not the now retired Richard Hughes. So a new combination uh, to, to get to know each other. It is. Richard Hughes got on so well with him, but Frankie's riding right at the yeah. top of his game this season. So um, I don't think you'd take that as a particular negative. I think the return to uh, Five Furlongs is going to be in his favour. For all that he might well have been a little bit of a disappointment to some since his win in the Alcos in Maidan mm. earlier on the year, it's worth bearing in mind that a couple of those runs, including the July Cup last time out, have been over six furlongs, a trip that he's yet to win over. So the return to five will definitely be in his favour. When you look at the, the others that, that could win the Nunthorpe, you have to bring into the equation Muthmir, who's had a really good season. And, and probably when you look at like what would be Muthmir's ideal race, you'd probably think five furlongs at York would suit him down to the mm. ground. Yeah, as you mentioned, he has had a really good season, yet some still talking about him as something of a disappointment. But that's only because of the expectation that many punters placed on his back at the start of the season as being a Group 1 performer in the making. He carried a penalty to win a Group 2 at Glorious Goodwood last time out, so he could still have a little bit more to offer. And this track, a well-run five furlongs, is exactly the kind of thing that he wants. It's also something that Outdo wants, and amongst the, the bigger prize horses, the potential outsiders, David O'Mara's horse has had a really good season. He loves this track. The yard have just been brilliant all year, so Outdo could be one that maybe runs a big race at a big price. Yeah, and his owner, Evan Sutherland, is a man that absolutely loves York, so there'll be a, a big cheer if Outdo was able to, to cause what many would perceive as a little bit of an upset. Uh, we touched on Muthmere there, uh, a player, a big player. Let's find out what his trainer makes of it, William Haggis. Well, I think he needs a fast pace, and sometimes over six furlongs, as silly as it sounds, they tend to not go too fast for the first two furlongs and then kick. So uh, that doesn't suit him because he, he's quite strong. Um, so I think five furlongs is his bag and they went very fast in the King George at Goodwood um, whenever it was two weeks ago and uh, he enjoyed that. So the, the, the speed of the Nunthorpe should suit him, it's whether he's good enough at the other end. The fact that he was giving weight away at Goodwood must have really impressed you as well. It rather annoyed me that he had to give so much weight away but uh, yeah, I mean, the fact that I think if you win a group race with a penalty, you're pretty useful. And finally, we're going to turn our attentions now to the staying division, and it has thrown up some epic races. What sort of races are you drawn to as the, the key pieces of form in the staying division? I think that Goodwood Cup that we saw there might well be one of them. You mentioned a, a tight finish, and that was certainly one. And you would think that one of the horses involved in that close finish is probably going to turn up for the Lonsdale Cup. Big Orange came home in front. Uh, Quest for More was not 
far away and, and he really battled to try and get the win. And then you've got the horse in behind, the Ascot Gold Cup winner, Trip to Paris and Palisades, who are both potentials as well. There isn't much between the lot of them. You could argue the case for any one of them turning up in the Lonsdale Cup and, and having a chance, you would imagine. And a horse that would be a really popular winner up at York, Clever Cookie, he could yet turn mm. up as well, perhaps. Um, maybe outclassed to some degree over a mile and a half in the King George at Ascot last time out. But his previous form was pretty good, wasn't it? He was very impressive here at York earlier on the season and he won the Ormond as well. So he would be a big player if he took his chance. Well, let's hope for another good finish in one of the staying races in the British Champion Series at York. So that's a look ahead to what are, as I said at the top, four excellent days races. I, I can't wait. Obviously, the highlight for, for I think all of us will be the, the Golden Horn Judmont International. Mm -hmm. But there are so many other highlights in and around that. And outside of the Champion Series races like the E-Ball really get the punters excited. It, it's a great four days, isn't it? It is. It's brilliant. As you say, the Judmont is going to be the highlight, but those big handicaps really like getting into those as well. The E-Ball a perfect example, but those sprint handicaps during the week at York mm -hmm. as well are fantastic races. Four excellent British Champion Series races coming your way from the Knaves Mire soon. Myself and Chris will be back as we look ahead to the final classic of the season, the St Ledger at Doncaster. But all that's left for us to say is enjoy York and best of luck. <laughs>